Okay, for more on this, I want to bring in Lindsay Goldbrum. She is an attorney at Outen and Golden LLP and has represented six of Harvey Weinstein's accusers. And she joins us now from New Jersey. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. I can guess at your first thoughts, but let's hear them from you. Were you surprised when this happened? So I was definitely surprised, obviously, given that this has been briefed and has been argued since that initial Molyneux hearing. It was something that was on everyone's minds as a possibility. But I am surprised that the Court of Appeals came out this way. Lindsay, you represented six of his accusers, including one of the women who testified during Weinstein's criminal trial in New York. Um, and the judge admitted that that testimony, uh, deciding that that was uh, that that was something that should happen. Why do you think that those testimonies were crucial to the trial? I think they were important because of Weinstein's defenses. Weinstein defended his actions often by saying that they were consensual, um, or by implying, rather, that they were consensual because he did not testify in the original trial. And so this testimony was important not only to show that it wasn't consensual, but that Weinstein knew it was not consensual. And so that was the purpose of this testimony. And in my opinion, it was properly admitted in the original New York trial. The argument being that these women were not part of the actual charges here, and that as a result, Weinstein was treated unfairly because these testimonies that included allegations weren't actually part of the case. Uh, can you see that side of it? I understand the arguments as they're being made because the case of Molyneux and Molyneux hearings, the purpose of them is to leave out the propensity evidence unless they're being offered for a different purpose. And the different purpose here was to, as I said before, enter in evidence that a, it wasn't consensual and that he knew it wasn't consensual. And so the probative value of the evidence was more uh, it weighed heavier than the prejudicial effect. And so that's the reasons why I believe it should have been admitted and it properly was. So what we're talking about here, there's a lot of legal terms that are being thrown around here, um, but there will be victims of sexual assault who are watching this. And, and I'm wondering what you think the message is that is being sent to them. The fact that this very high profile criminal uh, case was decided one way and has now been overturned. I think that survivors everywhere are going to be disappointed today. I think that Weinstein's accusers coming forward was really the start of the Me Too movement. And I think that this will feel like a setback for many. But the Manhattan DA's office has already said that they intend to attempt to retry him. And this will move forward. He's not going to be released, likely, because he does have the sentence that's pending in L.A. And hopefully this won't deter individuals who have been sexually assaulted from coming forward. And, you know, it's a real fear that that is going to be an unintended result of this. Um, but I hope that that's not the case. I want to talk about the fact that prosecutors have said that they are going to retry this case. What does that look like? What does that look like to to your clients? Are they potentially going to be uh, testifying again or given how this has played out, perhaps not? So it's likely that the, in the original trial, there were three women who testified for the, the crimes as they were charged. Those women will likely, if they are willing to, still have to testify again. But the Molyneux witnesses, who I formerly represented, I don't currently represent them, uh, but they likely won't be testifying in this new trial uh, because the Molyneux evidence, which is what th these witnesses are called, uh, it's named after a, an old case in New York, has been excluded. So my former clients um, and you know the three women that testified that the crimes weren't charged for will likely not have to testify a second time. Lindsay, this decision by the Court of Appeal in New York, it was a close decision. It was four to three. Um, and in the lead up to this case and to so many other cases dealing with sexual assault and the, the fact that there are two sides of this, there's been so much talk about how perhaps courts need to, to change in the way victims are treated and the way these cases are treated. Is this, I mean, I'm wondering, based on what we are seeing here, do you feel that that has to happen? Or is this just the, the legal process and the way it needs to play out? I think there are lots of issues with the legal process as we've seen unfold over the years. I think that 
uh, the, politici the politicization of the courts is often a problem and whether or not that played a role here, I think that there is a judicial system, it is a necessary system, but there are always changes that can be made to make it fairer and to have better protections for victims of sexual assault. Lindsay Goldbrum is an attorney at Outen and Golden LLP and has represented six of Harvey Weinstein's accusers. Lindsay, really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much for having me.